Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be using the newest not too shabby stamp and die of the month to create a couple cute Valentine's Day cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I saw this month's stamp of the month from Not Too Shabby, I fell in love. I just love all of these little fun pairings and the sentiments that go with them. I do have the dies as well that match the images and the sentiments. I will have this linked in the description box below for you to go check out. You can get a one-time kit or you can sign up to get this automatically each month. I have already seen next month's and I know that you won't be disappointed. Today what I want to do is use a couple of the images that are glass and I'm going to use a scrap of clear cardstock to stamp those on there just to make them look a little more realistic. My plan is to use the salt and pepper shakers and then I will probably use maybe the milk bottle and the cereal bowl. As I add any more products or tools, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover, but don't forget you can always leave any questions you have in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be stamping the items that are glass onto that scrap of clear cardstock. And because it is a non-porous surface, I'll be using Stays on Jet Black. And I figure I'll probably have to stamp it twice since these are new stamps and my Stays on Pad is a little dry. So that is why I'm setting these up in my Misty. Once I have the milk bottle and the salt and pepper shakers in place, I pick it up with the door of the Misty and ink and stamp and ink and stamp. After those were both on there, I needed to do some stamping for the paper piecing. For this though, I just put the same two images on blocks and I also got out my cereal bowl. On the right, you'll see I have some scraps of cardstock and one of those is silver foil, which I'm going to start with first. This will be the cap on the milk bottle and the toppers on the salt and pepper shaker. Oh, and I forgot the spoon in the bowl. Now, because this foil cardstock is a little slick, once again, I am going to use the stays on. And when you're gonna do this with a block, be really careful sitting it down because this sometimes does want to twist and turn. With the milk bottle, I gave it a few tries. The first one actually ended up being the best. But just make sure to set it down gently and try not to press it too hard so it wiggles. I did protect my work surface there with just that piece of recycled copy paper. So anything that hung off just went on to that. For the rest of the paper piecing, I got out my VersaFine Onyx Black. And the first thing I'm going to stamp is the pepper area onto this scrap of gray cardstock. Now we will do a little bit more to this later, so I will just set it to the side. I will be coloring today with some Zig Clean Color Real brush pens. So the next pieces will be stamped onto scraps of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I stamped the entire cereal bowl on there. And then for the milk bottle, I just need to concentrate on where the milk portion is. And for the salt and pepper shakers, I just need where the salt is. I took these off screen with the coordinating dies and I die cut and did a little extra fussy cutting. If anything is going to be paper pieced onto the back of the clear cardstock, I did try to cut it in pretty close to the black lines. 
Now we're going to try to make the pepper area look more peppery instead of just gray. I brought in a white ink pad from my stash and a piece of tissue paper. And what I did was ball it up and I tap it in the ink and then tap it over on the cardstock. Now sometimes you do need to adjust if you find you're not getting enough ink on there, just recrinkle it. And I just kept going until I thought there was enough white in that pepper area. Now it's time to do the paper piecing. For the milk bottle, the cap will go on top and then the milk will go on the underneath side of that. Now because of this, I do need to try to hide the adhesive as best as I can. So I'm going to place it behind where the ink is on the front of the milk bottle. So I'm going to put just a little bit on each of the eyes, on the nose, and then I try to run a thin line on some of the outline areas that are around the paper or the little face still. Now, once I had adhesive on there, the clear cardstock does get a little staticky, so you'll see it kind of cling to that. I did have to adjust it a little bit carefully, and then I realized I forgot to color the cheeks on the milk bottle. So I took it apart carefully, colored in the cheeks, and then I added some more adhesive and got it placed back onto the back of the milk bottle piece. Then for the lid, once again, I use the silvery cardstock and that goes on the front. So I didn't have to worry on this about hiding any adhesive. Once those two pieces were in place on the milk bottle, I set it to the side under a block and continued working on the rest. While I work on some more of that paper piecing, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to ask you and share my answers to so we can get to know each other a little better. Today's question comes from channel member Karen C and she would like to know, do you decorate your crafty space for the holidays or different seasons? Let us know in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so that we know you've answered it and would like us to see it. My answer is pretty simple and sweet and that is a no. I barely decorate the rest of my house for holidays or different seasons so I usually just keep my crafty space static throughout the year maybe just changing out which viewer cards I'm sharing or if I have something Hamilton to add or something new to my pin board. I can't wait to see your answers. Here's a look at all of the dried pieces. I am in love. Next up, I'm gonna be coloring the cereal bowl. And for this, I got out some different shades of red and pink. I start off with the cheeks by coloring in the darkest area with the pen and then blending it out with my colorless blender. This is how I'm gonna to continue to color the cereal on top. I just switch between the three colors for the pieces of cereal. And every time that I think my blender pen might have too much color on it from blending out, I will bring it over to that scrap of white paper and wipe it off until it is clear again. I am gonna leave the color of the bowl white, and you won't see it here, but off camera, I did a little shading around the outside edge and blended that in until it faded almost completely away. Here's a look at the finished bowl. For my pattern papers today, I will be using the Dots for Spring and Dots for Summer paper pads from Not Too Shabby. I love that it has great varieties of colors and there are little dots and big dots, one on each side. From the Dots for Spring, I'm gonna use the large light pink polka dots and I also cut and folded a gray card base. For the dots from summer, I will be using the small polka dots on red, and I'm using the second card base from that piece of gray cardstock. Now it's time to get those sentiments stamped. Off camera, I cut some ovals and scalloped ovals for my sentiment and to place the images onto. And now I'm gonna set these up in my Misty and get the sentiment stamped. 
First, I'm going to use the To My Bestie sentiment, and this will be for the cereal bowl and milk bottle. Once I have those two arranged on my oval where I think I would like them to go, I then place my sentiment in the open area. Then I pick the stamp up with the door of my Misty, remove my images, make sure the sentiment is straight there using the grid, and for the sentiments I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black. Now the great thing about the Misty is if I needed to stamp it twice, I can, but these actually ended up looking great from the beginning. For the salt and pepper shaker, it's basically the same process, but for this one, I am using we go together like dot dot dot, and then the salt and pepper shaker will go over on the right. I just love these adorable images and the fun little sayings. Now it's time to get the cards put together. Off camera, I did decide to cut down the red card to a square. So now my piece of red paper is four by four and the gray cardstock is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. The base of these went together pretty quickly. I added the pattern paper centered on the front and then I adhered my matted oval centered onto that. And because these cards were pretty flat so far, I decided for my images that I would pop them up with some foam tape. So I brought in my big blue rolls in three quarter and one quarter inch. I used different sizes on the back of these, just adding adhesive or foam to the areas that would be covered on the front by the paper piecing. Once those were full of foam tape, I pulled the release paper and got each image placed onto its card. I really love how you can see through the clear cardstock on the glass pieces, and it even leaves kind of a shadow to help it look more realistic. To finish the cards off, I'm going to be adding three matte gray sequins to each one. I thought the matte gray was a nice kind of intermediate between the shiny silver foil and the dark gray cardstock. These sequins I actually got with a not too shabby order. If I can find them in the shop, I will link them in the description box below. Off camera, I did add some white cardstock and strips of pattern paper to the inside. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's Valentine's themed cards using some clear cardstock and paper piecing. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.